This comes from the Color of Speed Sparrow that you can earn in Guardian Games. I believe it's the one you can get from a tri yeah, it's the one you can get from the Triumph uh, for earning class points. And it's it's the thing you have to unlock in order to get the uh, the track jacket from Bungie Rewards. But the flavor text says, after a certain point, speed is a matter of willpower. Petrovenge. Eva Levante threads a needle with fine white silk. A lone lamp lights the wood green of her table and the length of handsome black cloth in front of her. She only touches this garment at night, when her small flat in the last city is shrouded in secrecy. With each stitch, she recalls the strange encounter some months ago that prompted her clandestine work. It was late in the evening. She'd been walking back from the tower, nearly home, when she heard a smooth voice quietly assert, Eva, it's been too long. You look bright as ever. Osiris melted out of the shadows near her doorway. The ex-outfitter snorted. That's faint praise coming from someone who's been 50 for several centuries. My age shows in other ways. May I come in? Of course. She opened the door and noticed how he looked over both shoulders before he crossed the threshold. It's good to see you back in the tower, Osiris. Eva watched him out of the corner of her eye as she put the kettle on. I take it you're not here on official Vanguard business. No, I'm not. I'm here to ask a favor or contract your services, whichever you'd prefer. Osiris perched uncomfortably at the edge of her couch. Eva smiled. His regalia looked a bit absurd set against the mundanity of her cozy apartment. I'm always happy to grant a favor to an old friend, even if I'm the old one now. She examined her self-serious visitor with a gentle gaze. What do you need? A custom hunter cloak. Something that resembles the feathers of a crow. I'm sure there are plenty of outfitters in the tower that would do a fine job. I gave up on custom outfits years ago after my fingers started to go. She massaged her knuckles reflexively. I need someone that I trust. Someone who can keep a secret. Osiris fixed her with his inscrutable gaze. If you agree, a ghost called Glint will come by later to help choose the fabric. A secret cloak? This is just the type of thing Cade used to come to me for. In fact, the last hunter cloak I sewed was for him. She drifted off sorrowfully and poured the tea. Now, months later, she puts the finishing touches on the requested garment. The black fabric soaks in the meager light, highlighting the delicate white silk. It's as fine a work as she's ever done. Eva can't help but wonder who the new cloak is for. Who could warrant such secrecy? She just hopes it will be worn by a hunter as worthy as her last. That, uh... I didn't expect to get that from a sparrow when I read that for the first time. Yeah, that's. Uh... Uh, I read it. Yeah, I, I read it yesterday when I unlocked the sparrow, and I was like, uh, "This this has to be one of the ones that we talk about tonight." Yeah. Um, to hear Cade get brought back, and it, it's funny because it continues this relationship that Crow has with items from events, you know, dating back to the dawning from a couple of years ago, um, and even back to Black Armory, like the how his story keeps getting told in ever well not eververse items necessarily but sparrows and ships and class items and i think that's surprisingly touching like a nice callback to kate and osiris trusts eva enough to make this for knowing that she will she won't sit there and talk about it that it's you know it's a secret thing she only works on it at night um this also confirms something that i wasn't entirely sure about that it seems like Eva is not a guardian. Mm -hmm. That she is simply a civilian. And I mean, I, to be fair, I have not read her backstory that you can get through here. Um, she's one of the few people at the tower I don't really know a whole lot about. But she's tower grandma. Just she just bakes. She had a, She just bakes cookies. And... I assumed that. I assumed Christmas grandma had a ghost. <laughs> and uh, to find out here that she doesn't, it that's kind of an interesting like wink and nod as to why you don't buy shaders from her anymore uh is because you know, she's, she's too old to be doing that like yeah. do you think they would ever kill her off like of old age maybe do you think like in lightfall she's just gonna like die in her sleep or something and there's gonna be like a funeral in the tower i mean is that too dark to think about Man. That's gonna be the se that's gonna be the final seasonal event of Destiny Two is Eva's funeral. <laughs> no, and, and it's uh, still gonna Sabath be a lot of bounties. She's really Savathun. She's just luring you in with her cookies. If she was secretly Savathun, I think I would fucking quit. <laughs> I would quit because I can't see space. I cannot see space grandma go out that way. Come on, that's hilarious though to think about. 
she it lures is hilarious. You. I'm not arguing with that. Instead of like space magic, she just I lures like you it. in with cookies and and paper craft masks during Halloween. And <laughs> God, I don't like it. I'm not a fan. Unsubscribe. <laughs> The uh, the other piece that we have comes from the uh, comes from the uh, the hunter cloak. Um, I, I like the uh, the class items this time around, and uh, we're going to read the other two next week. We'll read the Titan Mark and the uh, the Warlock Bond. Um, but the Cobra's Hood says, "I never did find that horn." Dot dot dot. Lord Shax, Prakish set on his gray hornet, parked in his usual spot at the base of the tower. The former Guardian was watching bootleg transmissions of the latest Cabal death matches when one of his runners tugged on his sleeve. Prakash jumped in surprise. Son of a drag, don't sneak up like that. He smoothed his fur, bas- his fur vest in self-placation. Sorry, sir, the kid scuffed his feet sheepishly. Just that some guys want to make a bet. Prakash sucked his teeth in annoyance. So take the bet. What the hell are you hassling me for? The kid ran his grubby fingers along the sharp black lines of the bookie's ride. They won't give me the chip. They said I got to talk to you direct. Prakash swatted the runner's hand away. I just had that detailed. He sighed in exasperation. Fine, send them over. But if they end up making some lame prop on the new Hunter Vanguard or something, I'm going to run you over with this thing. The kid nodded and scampered off. A few minutes later, a fire team of three hunters sauntered over. Prakash slouched further on his sparrow in a dramatic display of nonchalance. His ex-crosshair enforcer, Tolnik, cracked his knuckles. The hunters posed coolly in front of the bookie. The team leader, a gunslinger, casually flicked the knife between his fingers. I guess you've probably heard of us. Prakash glanced at Tulnik, who gl- shook his head. Uh, not really, the bookie said. Now what's this about? The archstrider stepped forward menacingly. Show respect, you're talking to the Death Dealers. Prakash raised an eye. Cool name. I once had a cat called Death Dealer. Behind him, he toured Tulnik guffaw. <laughs> The Ark Strider snarled and sent a crackle of arc energy rippling through his arm. Before he could strike, the Night Stalker blinked in front of him and put her hand on his chest. Whoa, cool it, Jean. He's not worth it. Remember your breathing exercises. The Ark Strider nodded. You're right, you're right. He's not worth it. He retreated, put his hands on his head, and walked in circles around the plaza, exhaling loudly. Prakash cleared his throat cautiously. So you want to make a bet, or... You're damn right we do, the gunslinger replied. We're betting on hunters to win the Guardian games. Hunters rule, shouted Jean from across the plaza. Is that all, Prakash asked with confusion? That's stock standard. Why didn't you just put in a chip like everyone else? The Night Stalker leaned in conspiratorially. Because of what we're wagering, she said, and opened her pack to reveal a single curling horn. Prakash's eyes went wide. Is that whose I think it is? The gunslinger crossed his arms smugly. You tell us. How did you even get this? Never question the death dealers. Now, what's it worth to you? The gunslinger said. Prakish shrugged. Hunters win gold. You get one legendary hand cannon each. If not, I get. He dropped his voice to a whisper. The horn. (laughs) Throw in a couple umbral ingrams that Night Stalker countered and you got a deal. Prakish pretended to consider. It's a deal. He finally said and recorded the transaction in his data pad. Good luck in the Guardian games, hunters. Hunter's rule, shouted Jean to nobody in particular. <laughs> I think this is fantastic. Yeah. That finally answers the question of Shax's, Shax's horn. horn. <laughs> I get the horn. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> I absolutely love it. Um uh, that's just going to be this the thumbnail is... for the episode this week, by the way. It's just Shax's horn. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. I would absolutely love to just get the backstory on it one day. Like, if there is a backstory, I'm not really aware of it. If I, like, I am, I'm trying to think back if I can remember anything. Um,. Because it, it's, I don't know. It's always been gone, right? Like it's been gone for yeah. It, it, well, so the only time that we've ever seen him with both horns is in the trailers leading into Destiny Two when he's with Zavala, right? Building but a that's, tower. We see him that, with both help. That's be yeah, but that's like pre Destiny One stuff still. The only other tower. things that we know is right. The only other things that we know are that 
uh, Ikora did whoop him in the Crucible once. Yeah. Um, if I was a betting man, I would say it broke off during uh, Six Fronts or during Twilight Gap, and he used it to uh, melee an enemy with. Yeah. But I'm still very curious as to how they found it. Like This feels like something that's going to get explored later on. For, for the record, I have not read the other two uh, pieces. I have not read the, the Titan Mark or the Warlock Bond yet. So it's a very... We may still get the story, but I thought this was really amusing, and it was kind of a nice bookend from uh, the uh, unexpectedly emotional Sparrow reading that we just got. Right. Where I didn't expect to really, I don't know, feel anything. Yeah. This uh, this this was really nice. This is and it's kind of goofy. Like I expect the other two will be funny as well. Yeah. Uh, so I, I like to, I, I'm curious to see what happens. Like this is this is what I want to see in these types of events. Is like, give me some lore that like it builds the universe. Like there's there's guardian bookies. Yeah, he's right. a bookie that used to be a guardian. Like he, he's just like lounging on his sparrow. Like this is hilarious to me. Right. But what's better is we're airing cabal death matches on television. <laughs> That's are we like filming the battlegrounds or something yeah right i like to think that Shax is like i like you know zavala is super serious and saladin is super serious but like in a really commanding like leadership way whereas Shax is like super serious in like the most comical way ever i mean my other thing is did he break off the horn and give it to mara Sav? <laughs> Did Hunter steal from Marasov? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I th- this is fun though. This is the kind of stuff I like to close out seasons on. Is uh, stuff that's really lighthearted and funny because uh, next season is probably going to start the climb to the Witch Queen. Yeah. If I uh, follow the pattern of Worthy or of uh, Joker's Wild. So I'm a little, not apprehensive, I think apprehensive is the wrong word to use here, but um, by the end of the season, things are going to be getting dark again, especially yeah. for that season leading into the Witch Queen. Oh, so yeah. this may be one of the last like lighthearted things that we get for a while in mm-hmm. this uh, in this story. Yeah. So a Guardian Bookie, I think, is a great way to go. I do know the other two reference him, so I'm very excited to see what happens. I uh, can only hope that, you know, maybe Osiris and Saladin or Saint makes some, uh, some guest appearances. Yeah. 